Hey everybody, what's going on? Sorry, uh, legitimately late today. Um, this is what's going on with my computer screen. It is letting me move for a moment, and it looks like the refresh rate on the screen is like it's it, you can see it going down and i don't know what exactly is going on maybe somebody smarter than i with computers can help me figure out what the heck is going on here but not good not good um i'm just gonna try to turn it off even uh, and to, to, to restart it one more time, but sorry guys, sorry for the delay. Also, um, if anybody is watching and they are uh, thinking that this stream, uh, the replay is going to be um, a story or a teaching time targeted for the replay crew, of course, it, uh, we love to have you guys as a replay crew. But I am going to be interacting with you guys who are here in the chat and uh, talking about whatever we want to talk about in the chat rather than um, whatever it is, you know, presenting one topic like I used to do uh, frequently, just because I think that's going to work better um, than the whole present a topic, say hello to everyone coming in and all that jazz. Uh, and then the replay crew is like, I don't know what's going on. Who are you saying hello to? All that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, but that is not, that's not good. Um, wait, did it, no. As soon as I move it, it just starts acting up, going crazy again. Um, the bummer part is, this is a 2000, um, 15 and i bought it uh refurbished and then uh we had a major whoopsie daisy um when a glass of water when people were over spilled off the table onto the keyboard totally fried the screen and so they had to fix it it was a 850 dollar fix which normally you think maybe that's not worth it but it it uh it does everything that I want and it's the last one that is you know uh, you're able to update easily and stuff and it's just oh man it's just a bummer um, so yeah I I don't know what's going on with it right now um, but I can't even move the mouse more than a few seconds before it freezes. <sighs> Just the last thing I need to have my computer go out. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Tickets to space. Uh, followed everything you said, and I've got baby chili, ra chili and strawberry raspberries. Uh, everywhere along with uh, beautiful baby um, uh, PFR neons. Um, PFR. Uh, is that oh Suda McGill Fricata or I wonder what PFR? What, maybe I'm totally uh, spacing on something, but uh, you're totally welcome. Tickets to space. I'm glad it's working out for you. Uh, right on. Well, I'm gonna have to just not look at this because. This is going to seriously give me a meltdown. Uh, oh, look at it now. It's just, uh, it, it, I'm, yeah, it's, I can't even use it. That is, so, in any case, guys, how's it going? Um, I have a couple little projects uh, in the making that I figured I'd show you guys to, um, I can't even get it to, I can't even like get it to click a button. Like it just took me all that time just to even try to open one tab, just to move the mouse over. Uh, so yeah, anyhow, um, I have a couple projects going on and uh, one of them is 
slides for the microscope. So we got slides today, a whole new pack of 70. We got uh, slips or slide cover. And uh, the, I have the solution and I have dyes, which actually you can use methylene blue uh, or malachite green or Victorian green um, in order to dye your uh, little stuff on there. So um, I was thinking that uh, we could possibly do a live stream someday where we just go through pond water or tank water samples and see what's in there and just chat about whatever questions you guys have as far as life in general and aquaria in general. Anyhow, um, the other thing is my mom brought me this uh, big old container well, it's not that big, but it's a, it's a good size container. Here's my head for comparison. <laughs> uh, and this is a jar, glass jar. Um, it seals off, which is interesting. I could do one of those life in a jar type things. But what I, I think, you know, she said she'd like to see a little aquascape in here. So I think what I'll do is fill it with substrate to about here, halfway almost. And then do a very shallow substrate with some stone and maybe leave the top off of it. It's either that or we're going to seal it and do the whole life in a jar, uh, you know, for it since it's got a rubber gasket that um, will cut off every bit of air that you come or go. So there's that. Um, so other than that, guys, how's it going? Let's let's get into the fish room. We'll get out of my wife's hair. Um How's it going? Let me unplug this loud filter too. So, um, how's it going? Um, who do we have in here too? Uh, I really appreciate the super chat uh, tickets to space. Thank you, buddy. Uh, and I, I, gotta, I hope I see that tank of yours once you get it up and going. Fearless one uh, is the exhaust fan free of dust. I I don't know. I'll troubleshoot that when I when I'm not live. Um, yeah, thanks for if anybody knows about computers and knows what that loading line is. It seems like it's something to do with refresh, and maybe that would mean graphics or the ribbon to the screen. I don't know. Um, but whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to cost me a boatload of money. Um, Amazon, uh, research center for ornamental fish or Dr. Anthony. Good to see you, sir. I hope you are a thorn in my side. Uh, Patty's petite tanks right on. Good to see you, my friend. Sweet shot. Good to see you also. Uh, and then uh, who else is in here? Uh, freshwater ichthyology, right on. Um, nice to see you, Rebecca. Uh, Wayne's Aquatics, Lindsay Adams, what's up? Skeddy Nona. Um, Skeddy, weren't you like a, for some reason I thought you were a channel member, uh, you know, $1.99 channel member. Doesn't have your name listed as such, but maybe i was mistaken i don't mean to put you on blast or anything um sandy o hello uh gene l brian what's up brian uh richard reynolds david rayner michael long donnie wolf what's up it's good to see you i liked your posts uh, of all your fish online uh on on the facebook group those were Really beautiful African cichlids you had there. Uh, Craig, what is up, Craig? Good to see you, man. Uh, and who else is snuck in the door? Matthias, Matthias, Matthias. Um, oh, and uh, Rebecca, I hope that your migraine gets better. Uh I hope you feel better soon. That is a bummer. I used to get migraines and cluster headaches um, really badly in my late teens and early 20s. And boy, can I sympathize with how rough that can be. I, I hope you feel better very soon. Uh, Dave O, 
uh, Aqua Balls, which is George, of course, who actually has a new video where he's got his Tanapoma and Sorgii, um, or the the Ornatus or Ornate uh, Tanapomas, sometimes they're called. Really cool little African fish. Uh, Carolyn, hello, good to see you. Um, Joseph uh, Ariando, hello, Carolyn, uh, or Caroline, rather. Um, I thought I saw Carolyn in here, too. Maybe I'm wrong. In any case, uh, yeah, it is great to see everybody. And uh, now I, hey, Pelham, wel welcome also. It is uh, great to see everybody. So, um, what have I been up to uh, since the last live stream? Uh, Steve Hubbard, thanks. <laughs> Saying hang in there. Yeah, I am. A lot of my life happens on that laptop. Obviously, I do YouTube, and uh, there's a lot of functions in YouTube that you can't do on a phone. It just doesn't let you. Even in desktop mode now, they've made it so if you have the the browser in desktop mode, you can't you can't do anything uh in the settings and it's just oh my goodness it's it's so infuriating um really frustrating stuff uh so yeah uh yeah george i really want those tanapoma i've been looking all over for those things for a long time um uh, and it's cool that you got a wild uh group of them to breed with eight of them huh eight pairs uh, or eight of them, at least. That is cool. Um, let's see here. So what else do we have going on here? Um, oh, I have, uh, you know, my Malawa shrimp breeding project. Taking it to a new level where um, I've, I've been separating the shrimp by uh, color type. So clear red and and blue and there's all sorts of other colors that come out but i'm trying to keep it to the ones that are uh staying red or blue and so then i'm going in i'm selecting those putting them in a jar and then just waiting in a clear jar to see when they're stressed if there's any that actually color up um in a way that's you know better than clear or or those nature tones and so if i see any like blue or any red chromatophores or pigment cells uh in their uh back underneath their 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 uh plating then i will uh take them and throw them into these little bins i've got on the floor here uh that are they're just like tubs they're like ice cream tubs and um then I'll take those and be able to see which ones are truly the most colorful because some look great. They look blue. They have that blue gene and like they can color up blue, but they are easily reverting to clear. And I'd love a line that is always blue to some degree so they don't get mixed up. Um, yeah. If, if the screen is dying, so we should, uh, you should be able to plug it into a, cheap secondhand pc monitor and just use that you know i hope that that's the case i hope i can just use an hdmi cord and plug it into the tv or whatnot i'll find out later um but the problem is that the mouse tracking and any like menu functions and stuff are also extremely messed up like it's not loading uh and it stopped and stuff so i'm afraid there's some disconnect actually in the communication between those but uh hey we have a ten dollar super chat from matthias thank you so much buddy uh i really or matthias but i'm assuming it's matthias uh i really appreciate that uh especially since it looks like i just lost two thousand dollars worth of laptop uh, uh, can't tell you guys how much that stresses me out. <laughs> Not a good time for it to happen. Uh, when is it a good time for it to happen, though? Um, so 
let's flip this around. Let's look at some fish while while we chat because I know you guys know what I look like, and uh, you know my face. It's boring. You got the buck teeth and uh, just boring. So we're gonna flip it around. We're gonna turn around. Every now and then I get a where's Rico stand. He could be exploiting my singing. So check out this pretty little lady. Uh, she is uh, actually... <clears throat> hold on. She is a platinum from Aquatic Arts, Madaka Rice Fish. But look at that yellow in her. That is a bright yellow jean she has on her tail fin and on her uh, anal fin there. Uh, and I really, really, really want to try to breed out the, that yellow coloration. It's so beautiful. Um, so, yeah. So then in this tank, we've still got all these uh, beautiful, I'm calling them the Ukrainian flag epistos. Uh, this guy has fully made his little workshop, his little uh, palace down it's real dirty but back here where uh this cave is and he has a little lady that he hangs out with but there's the male then over here we've got uh a male and female that that are uh guarding these caves uh male and female for this one and a female for this one there's the female that's guarding it um, so I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if it's the best idea to have, um, uh, what is that a dorsal or an anal fin, uh, on, uh, or not anal fin, adipus. That was the word I was thinking of. Um, on, on these, is it just their dorsal fins set way far back, Dr. Anthony? Um, and they've just mutated that way or, or whatever their killifish. They just look that way. Uh, I definitely misspoke, uh, when I said anal fin <laughs> and, oh, so no, it's not an adipose fin. Okay. So it is a dorsal. So if there is an adipose fin, is there always a dorsal fin? Uh, that's the question to be or not to be. Uh, also the scrimps are doing real good. Uh, they're pretty much all pregnant. All the females are. Um, well, she's not. She's got a, a saddle. But um, no heater, no filtration, nothing in here but a bunch of plants. Nobody, nothing, nobody, nothing. No one in here but us chickens. Nobody in here at all. John Gonzalez, thank you so much for the $1.99 Super Chat. I wish I had a, a little song. With, uh, well, you guys wouldn't want that anyways. Me booty shaking, uh, for every single, uh, for every single super chat. We don't sleep because we just party or whatever the heck, uh, the Aquatic Morning Show song says. Uh, we don't sleep because the party don't stop. That's what it is. Uh, and, uh, in here, you can see all the different stages of the Neo Caridina, uh, cherry shrimp developing uh you can see the saddle on them you uh this one is so has such a huge saddle that i can actually see her the round eggs in her back which is pretty crazy uh also another one had babies about a month ago and they're now starting to really come out and forage and uh, move around which is cool uh and then we also have all these blue stardust shrimp uh, some babies were born, and they're pretty small, um, but they're around. And then we have these darn freaking scuds, scuds, not missiles, but uh, little scuds that can do damage to your shrimp. Um, but instead of worrying about the damage to my shrimp, let's feed one to my little baby dragon. If we can find him, let's see if he'll come just at the sight of something in his tank. Usually he will if if I if I give him uh, some incentive of something in his area. 
Muddy, where are you? Where? Wow, uh, that's odd. Usually he comes immediately. He must be real hidden. Also, these are my Radnocentris uh, Siri Creek. And then I have Radnocentris uh, Ornatus from Puna Creek in the other tank. <laughs> so that's fun to have both varieties. One is a lot darker color, and the other one is is um, a lot more of a... Oh, what would you call it? I guess like a, a lot more silver without as much uh, detail on the fins. And uh, because of that, you see like a lot more of the iridescent blue on the ones without the silver, whereas you see like a dark black on the other ones. That's so weird. I don't know where my little dragon is. Little buddy, where are you? Usually he comes right up to the glass when it's time to eat. Um, I'm a little worried. That's odd. We had a friend stay the night here last night, and he slept with the window wide open, and so the room got pretty cold. Uh, Alex, Renee just got home. Gotta leave. All right, you have a good one. Happy life, happy wife, Dr. Anthony. <laughs> Night Rider, what's up? Hey, what's up, Shanna Banana? Uh, coming in. Good to see you. Mick, what's up? Liquid Zoo OnlyFans. Guys, I want to definitely uh, tell you guys to check out Liquid Fins on <laughs> Liquid. Okay, Liquid Zoo OnlyFans. Check out their uh, um, website, which is fishfam.link. Uh, has great schedule of when people stream and uh, detail on how to get a hold of them, like their social media info and all sorts of great stuff. Just really supportive of the of the YouTube community and online community of uh, fish tube keepers. So I, I highly recommend checking that out. Um, Man, I'm pretty concerned where my little guy is. I've got this food in here for him, a scud. And the problem is I don't feed these rainbow fish the scuds anymore because uh, the – oh, there he is. I see him. So i got to catch the scud again now if I can. This will be delicate, guys. Where did he go? Where did the little scud go? He is like a little cruise missile. There he is. Trying to catch him in an eye eyedropper. This is not hopeless. Well, he swam into the layer of uh, you guys. You guys will see him in a sec. The uh, the cichlids. So uh, he won't last long in there. But there's the little micro dragon goby right here back here chilling see look he attacks the little eyedropper the second i put it in there that's why i was like where is my buddy so um we'll get him another scud and uh if you guys have any questions um please feel set uh feel free to uh say your piece or if you have any announcements or anything like that um also, we got a couple of rice fish I put in the shrimp tank because I had so many of the little seed shrimp on the glass here, little white dots uh, that kind of jump around. They kind of have real jerky motion, uh, almost like they, they're glitching or something. Um, and uh, I, I just wanted to get that population down while also fattening up my shrimp or my uh, my uh, madakas. And they're growing pretty quickly, these platinum madakas are growing pretty quickly in here with that. But uh, as I was saying, we've got really nice uh, amount of, of these Caradina shrimp that are super pregnant, um, which is cool to see. Hey, there's another scud, if I can catch it. Catching scuds in a turkey or in a pipette, not even a turkey baster. Turkey baster would be a lot easier. Um, is a fine art. It's I feel like a karate kid when he's got the chopstick and he's trying to catch the fly in it. Uh, Mr. Miyagi style. All right. 
I'll get him this time. Doesn't help trying to film at the same time, but all right. Now let's feed him to the little dragon. Little dragon, come forward to receive your meal. Where'd he go now? A little brat. He's usually setting himself up for an ambush somewhere. Like, back up in there or underneath one of these rocks under here. Sometimes over here. Uh, but he was just out and about, cruising around, looking for food. And now... I do not see my little uh, schismatogobius amapluvulosa, which is a long name for a, a little fish. Uh, I feel like the smaller the fish is, the shorter the name it, it should get. Should get a nice. Oh, there it is. What's what the heck is it doing back here? Come on. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to feed it way back there because we've got the scud up in the up here. So let's let's make sure the scud's in the bulb. And then we're going to take it back to our buddy. And we're going to let it pop out right in front of him on the gravel. Uh, if he's looking. Is he looking? Here. Come out, dude. Can you guys see that? Probably not super well, huh? But here's our little buddy. And there he goes. He got it. So he is fed for the moment. Uh, but he needs to eat about five of those a day. And that's actually one of the joyous parts of my day, definitely, is, is feeding him. Then we've got my Madaka factory. You can see here, I just put the eggs on moss in here. And every day, lately anyways, I've had little joys to collect with the pipette. And uh, this pipette actually has a busted seam. I have a few new pipettes. But... Uh, I, it has a busted seam, so it doesn't hold water as well. But you know me. I'm one of those guys who wears his T-shirt until it freaking falls off in shreds. Um, unfortunately, I'll get a good pipe at. Uh, Mick, are the cribs guarding eggs so other fish are not allowed to get up front? Oh, you guys are talking about something in chat. Yeah, if you want to talk to me, if you have a question for me, guys... Um, definitely, uh, put the at Alex or at secret history, uh, especially today. My brain is real frazzled after that computer is dying on me. I really don't want to think about it. Uh, but, oh, look, at we've got more eggs on this pretty gal and we'll see who else has eggs in this tank. It's also not heated. And uh, is a real straightforward, it's substrate from a local river, um, sand, real fine sand from a local river. And uh, there's some scuds in there, and there's some little seed shrimp. Here's another real preg, or real, look at all the eggs on her. So w what we're going to do with them, uh, actually, one of my favorite parts of the day, I always like sharing this, because... I think this is such a cool experience, especially when if, if it's your first year taking care of uh, rice fish. And so I love this process. A lot of people just leave spawn mops in, but they're really hardy fish. And so you can easily just catch them. Oh, a shrimp wants to be caught too. Get out of there, little shrimp. There we go. So then check this out. I wonder if it'll do it on camera. Of course, probably not because... Uh, things never cooperate on camera, but I'm going to try. We're going to try, guys. So then I take my pipette, and basically uh, the eggs are on the belly, and these fish can be trained to 
uh, become submissive and know to kind of roll over when you're harvesting the eggs. Otherwise, it gets difficult. But see that? I was able to grab the eggs all in one big uh, jelly clump. And then I can move them back over to the hatchery tank, squeeze the little baster into uh, there. It's as simple as that. She's doing fine. She's a little stressed, but she's doing fine. So then I'll put her back up in here. No more eggs on her belly. Um, so that's good. And then the thing um, that you'll learn when you keep rice fish, whether it's in a tub or a tank, when they have eggs on their belly, that's when they're going to hide. So if your rice fish is, if you know you have five or six and all of a sudden one's missing, it's probably because they're, they're holding eggs. It's almost always because of the fact that they're holding eggs. So you just want to look and make sure that nobody else has eggs. Also, I figured I'd show you guys, they're not colored up yet at all, but these are my rainbow shiners and my beta minopina. Uh, We've got a little female here who's got some red to her. Kind of hard to see her color with just a just a shop light up there. But then we've got another one. So I do have a pair, which is nice. And then here comes all these rainbow shiners that are growing out. These are from Aquatic Arts. Uh, and Aquatic Arts has a bunch of rainbow or a bunch of uh, angelfish on sale right now, including the same line that Sergio was from. My favorite fish I've ever had. As far as that goes. Also, I've got the black uh, line of Limadaka rice fish. And so all these, hopefully, uh, I hope to have them, um, since I've had them now all about two months, I hope to have enough spawning offspring from them all that the offspring can go out into the winter tubs and that I don't actually have to put the breeding core crew because last year I lost everyone outside uh, when it got to like 115 degrees or 45 Celsius in one day, the hottest day in Seattle history. Um, and then right here, we have my, my little mason jar. But this is simply full of little rice fish uh, fry that are about two weeks to four weeks old and you can kind of see them swimming around i hope i hope you guys can kind of make them out um but they just hang out in here and then i give them green water from the pond when they're real young and then i give them uh, a little bit of the aquarium co-op fry food there's one right there that's uh right next to the glass there's so many in here but it, they, the camera doesn't like to focus on such tiny things with the glare but there's a lot in here. There should be about 60 in here right now. And these are mostly the red caps from up here with the orange head and the platinum body. Uh, there are a few pearl scales, but then I'm keeping another jar of them elsewhere of just the, these ones. And specifically, whenever she has eggs, I keep them off to the side because I really want to bring out that... Uh, that uh, lame or lame however you want to say it um pattern uh which is the sparkles the the sparkles screaming fly productions what's going on alex i was thinking maybe the cichlids are on eggs so that is why the schismatogobius is not allowed in front of the tank oh i see what you're saying Nick. let's see <laughs> I don't think they are because the female came out all the way to over here somewhere a minute ago. Um, but let's take a look. Let's let's move their little hut. Let's see if the male is guarding. He doesn't look colored up to me. But let's let's remove it and see if he gets freaked out at all. It could be. I mean, he is posturing kind of interestingly, but I don't see any eggs. There is a hut right here, though. Um, the hut is what, where I would assume they do put the eggs. 
And I think that's where the female is at this exact moment. I think she's under in the hut because I don't see her elsewhere. Um, but yeah, so hopefully it'd be great if they did have some eggs in there. Although, yeah, I feel like the male would be in the hut. Midnight Lobster, happy Friday the 13th. Right on, right on. Uh, also, these guys are kind of showing off with some of the natural light coming in. So let's try to catch these. These are such an underrated fish. And they used to be pretty popular in the hobby. Um, I'm going to move some of this stuff aside so we can see them better. But these guys are Lamias, Lamia tridents. And they are a, a live bear from the wild. Uh, they're found in Central America and out through the Medi not the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, uh, the Caribbean, the Caribbean, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they're just a really cool little striped live bear with a metallic blue body. And uh, yeah, I really like them. They've been in here with the um, with the Jenga rubra. But the thing with the Jinja or Jinga Rubra uh, is that, they, you know, they've got some fry in here. And I think the, the Lamias are eating some of the fry. So I definitely need to put them into separate conditions soon. And that's why I'm just like on pins and needles waiting for uh, tub season to start so I can fire up the tubs out there, which are just so full of life this year. They're wildly productive full of little grubs and creepy crawlies and uh you can see here i've got samples from different well those are from the aquariums that we were looking at under the microscope for the video the other day but here is the pond water you can see for the tannins and the green water or green algaes and uh yeah so uh Shame B. Hello. How's it going? Pelham's Aquatics. Also, hello. How's it going? I hope you're doing well. Uh, Craig, you said can see them. Uh, see what? Could you see some eggs or something? And Susan, hello. How are you doing? Good to see you. Anthony's Fishy Friends and Ebor Millie. Also good to see you guys. Uh, TM Judd TX, uh, how would you suggest growing out uh, and gut loading brine shrimp. Well, I would say um, hatcheries work well. They do. Uh, I I bought that um, the Awaze shrimp hatchery. That's like forty bucks. Um, it's honestly to me about the same as a two liter bottle on one of those little ten dollar platform deals where you run an airline through it. Um, it doesn't have a handy spigot setup like the way you'd want to harvest them that well. So you kind of have to tailor that on its own also. Um, but uh, what I would do is I would hatch them just the way you would normally hatch brine shrimp, you know, follow the, the directions for whichever type you have. And then I would um, I would get uh, something like rapashi and you can actually just take rapashi and I would either use rapashi, um, green water algae or... Um, where is that stuff? Factor AE, which, uh, Aquarium Co-op started selling their, um, products too. So that's why I've got the connect on those. And, uh, the bee pollen works pretty well too. The uh, pollen granules, uh, to, to, to gut load any of those little isopods or, um, any of the little like shrimp like creatures, they'll definitely eat all that kind of stuff because it's real high in protein. So they'll seek it out and uh, yeah, that'll enrich them, but they don't actually have the ability to eat or even have a stomach formed or esophagus until around day two um, somewhere around 30 hours after they're born. So there's no point in trying to, to feed your seed shrimp or your brine shrimp or your isopods, um, depending on the species, until they've formed that anatomy. But with brine shrimp, it's usually about 30 hours old. They have 
the ability to form the full mouthpiece and stomach and digest it. And then you can gut load them. So they won't be teeny tiny brine shrimp either, you know, but you get just as much nutrients. Um, you get just as much, uh, uh, with, uh, what do you call it? Um, the, the, the very first stage of them right after their cysts, right after they hatch, you get just as much nutrients in those first eight hours before they start metabolizing it. And they actually use about 10% of their energy from when they're even in their, um, in, in their little, um, cyst, they use about 10 or 20% of their total, uh, calories and energy to break out of, uh, that eggshell basically. And so, um, just reminding you that, that when they, crack out of that shell is when they're going to be the most cal uh, or calorie and nutrient dense. Uh, also, I moved my uh, least killifish or heteranda formosa into a two and a half gallon uh, and put uh, the one female, apparently I only saw one female left and the males I had, which was like eight. So I feel bad for her, but I started by putting her in with one male for um, about a week until she was uh, starting to show that she was pregnant. And then I added a ton of moss so they can just get lost and, and uh, not have to see each other nonstop. Then we've got my bell bottom guppies in here and a lot of females with only really one major sire who's right here or King who's got all the genetics I like, including the little tail, uh, the tail look. And now we're starting to get some females with the actual tail patterns, which was a big goal of trying to figure out that line. I wanted the females to have some sort of patterning on them. And so it looks like this next generation, finally the cross I did three generations ago, uh, is finally we got a few recessive uh, babies out of the mix. The rest are not, but... There's three or four females now that have, like, there's another one that has color in their tail, like a snakeskin guppy pattern. And then here we have the uh, the really pretty um, metallic blue or, or, I mean, in theory, black uh, tuxedo koi guppies. And uh, I've been breeding them to have that long dorsal fin. And then I cross them with some actual endler females. And a few of their babies came out completely wild looking. Um, and that, that brings me back to this tank down here where they have the blonde gene too with the Jenga rubras. But the female or the, the, the males look super bright and psychedelic. There's one right there. That's what the cross ended up looking like. That doesn't look like the parents, either one of them at all. But it's got that big long dorsal fin with electric, uh, electric yellow and dots on it. So it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, you could put rice fish with a betta in a five gallon. Um, I would say that you'd want to do that with fish that are over an inch long, though. Betta are gonna snap and eat at them, and they're they're a fish. The rice fish are one that like to. Uh, stay at the top of the tank if they can help it um, and they will dive down lower to forage and stuff like here's one down low in the shrimp tank foraging for those seed shrimp that are in the corner but for the most part they stay up at the top where you see the other ones in here and these are just itty bitty babies I'm going to move them all before they get to the size where they could harm any of the baby shrimp that are in here um, so there's that. Uh, and then, as I said earlier, these guys are all doing good. Um, I've got five of them. And essentially, we have an extra female, which is great. So we have three females, two males. And looks like two of the males are kind of settled off with these, the cave over there, the cave here. Female, female, female. So we have three of the females and three of them have caves, which is great. And then this is one that I got at um, Aquarium Co-op for that blonde 
underpinning the yellow it's not albino they still have the blue eye but the bright yellow and orange tones there's even kind of a green depending on the angle uh on those um are the pistols guarding eggs um definitely not in this little guy this one um there there seems to be this gal guarding it pretty heavily uh she's not in the in the actual egg chamber and i see a snail on the edge of it and so i don't know what to tell you um i hope that she's guarding eggs she comes and goes into that cave a lot but i don't know i mean i feel like usually epistos tend to stay in the cave entryway or in the cave when they are guarding and it is a female so i don't know for sure how they how they function or if it varies on species but yeah so i don't know we'll see um yeah i like that guppy a lot too take us to space um midnight lobster uh what's going on dude um how many gallons is the evaporation a week in these tanks um I would say, um, you know, so like for a good example, um, this little two and a half gallon, if I fill it up to the rim, this would be about two weeks of evaporation in here. Um, the air gets pretty super low. I mean, even though I've got the, the um, air um, dehumidifier, this I change out usually every 15 to 24 hours. So a little more than once a day on average, if you add it all up. And that usually gives me about um, a liter of water. And then I usually use the liter of water to top off my, um, my acidic or, or low TDS tanks. Uh, and uh, so there's that also, it looks like the gobies, again, are in spawning mode. Look how big that female on the rock is. She's full of eggs. Yeah, see, here's that female um, Enigmatochromis leucansi. She's hanging out all the way over here, way away from the male who's guarding back in here pretty strong. So I don't know what that's about. I don't know why... They, they seem split up the last day or two um, for a good amount of time. Maybe somebody watching knows. Um, they just have not spawned for me, though. And they've got, I mean, they're always coloring up like they're going to spawn and doing dances and showing off for each other. And it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting. There goes the little micro dragon hovering by. Let's try to feed him one more time. Um, just because I love watching them eat. Also, in here you can see I've got these kind of nature colored, like green and clear and tan shrimp. These are a caradina, obviously, uh, unless the cherry shrimp produced them, which I'm positive they didn't. Uh, and I don't know what they are. I don't know if they're a mix of the cheetahs or the raccoons, because basically this was just an experiment tank and so we threw everything in here it's like a gumbo or a stone soup tank threw everything in one pot and uh decided to see what would happen I wanted to make sure i could take care of them before grant sent out any uh more uh garden of eater shrimp uh he's got all sorts of really cool rare and interesting shrimp but when he offered them i was like i feel like I don't have a good enough track record breeding uh, some of the harder to breed caradinas. So could I try out, you know, a tangerine shrimp and a cheetah shrimp like this? This is a cheetah here, uh, a stardust and a raccoon like the striped one. Um, and so he sent me those. He only made me charge. He only charged me for shipping um because obviously he knew i'd be showing him on the show because how could i not they're so cool and his caradina i have to say are the best caradina shrimp that i've ever gotten as far as how rough and tumble they are how much they can tolerate um look at that it was one was fighting with a piece of leaf um that was funny uh but yeah i mean they really can can handle quite a bit of swing in TDS, pH, temperature. They're quite the, um, 
quite the adapted little shrimp. And I, I think it's because they're all raised here in the U.S. They're all raised in Florida. And Florida tends to have a lot harder water than I do. So the fact that then I have really soft water, like a TDS of 10 or 20 coming out of the tap, uh, basically rainwater or RO water, it means that then I'm able to uh, really take good care of them, even though they've evolved to withstand some hardness, unlike almost all other caradinas. So if you guys live in an area where the where your TDS is a little higher, I mean, I'm still going to uh, recommend that you use RO water or half RO water or humidifier water or um, go to a uh, a store like Walgreens or CVS or um, Kroger or whatever, and get yourself bottled water um, that says either distilled or purified water, you know, um, get that and then um, use half of that for your water changes. Uh, and you only need to change like 10% a week or something like that. Um slow and steady with most shrimp tanks they don't like big water changes so um yeah there's another uh blue, there's a stardust right there that's the blue one that is uh, also all buried up and this one now has a saddle this was the one that we thought oh maybe it's the male that impregnated the other stardust but now all three stardust females uh have have uh berries on them they're pregnant uh, other than this one right here who has a saddle so uh it looks like grant was wondering and so is the whole world you know stardust shrimp are they wild are they a mix of things like what are they it looks like they might be a caradina serrata then or something like that um that would make the most sense back here you can see everybody's eating a shed and i like to point this out when i've got one of these because you can see so very clearly, well, you can when you can focus on it, you can see that this is the head of the shrimp. It is that headpiece and shoulder. And that's what you should see in a shed. You should see a break there, and then the rest of the body's back over there. But that main shoulder, like right here on the red one, is where they bend and they hop out of their exoskeleton and they try to do it in one move after folding themselves over and over and over and over again, touching their head to their tail. Um, and that that's their kind of little trick. And then they'll pop out of it. They'll fling out like a spring. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool to watch when you catch it. I'm, I'm waiting. Um, I know I did the stages of shrimp pregnancy, but I'm waiting to try to catch one that's actually shedding live too so that's kind of one of the next things i'm looking for in the fish room there's a no number of things that i have been wanting to do videos on and i'm just constantly waiting to find x y or z happening uh to get the footage of it so um uh what do i use to remineralize uh you use straight art RODI for Caradina Shrimp, King Remineralizer, and Tap, and uh, Rody for Neos. Caradina are too expensive to risk. Uh, I understand that for sure. Um, what I've been using is um, honestly just crushed coral. Uh, and then this is um, Dragonstone, which in my case, this specific batch of Dragonstone was... Uh, was actually slightly alkaline when I put it in a bucket of, of neutral water. I ended up with um, 7.5 water when I filled the bucket with this Dragonstone for two weeks. That was years ago. But ever since I've kept it, knowing that it had um, properties that were special, you know, it, it was probably it had some sort of calcium deposits from uh, silt or ash clay kind of stuff that that is in the volcanic mud that it's formed from and uh so i i i kept it and now as algae and the shrimp and things break it down over time uh it leaches into the water at a nice slow rate but the crushed coral which you can see all the little white spots there isn't much of it there's maybe a few tablespoons in the whole two and a half gallons 
but it's enough that that really does remineralize the water for me pretty well. Um, so that's what I use. But in the past, I've used the like I like salty shrimp um, remineralizer, um, and uh, yeah, king shrimp's fine too. Uh, shrimp king. Uh, so yeah, um, let's see here. Also, um, I feel like you guys haven't seen my big uh, tanks out front in a while. By the way, uh, I guess I should update you guys on this tank, too. It is doing really, really well. There's almost no algae anywhere to be found anymore in this tank. There's a little bit on the wood right there, uh, but it is doing phenomenal. I got rid of the species of plants that were just not accurate to Myanmar, the, the uh, baby tears. And uh, now we've got a really accurate biotope. I mean, some of these plants are from Myanmar in general or Burma in general, rather than have I specifically seen them documented on Lake Inlet? No, but the region uh, on the map squarely covers Lake Inlet in, in like shaded in where, where you find maps of where they are. So I can't guarantee they're there. Um, I need, there aren't that good of pictures of what you just find at Lake Inlay. Um, and lately there haven't been a lot of tourists there the last year or two because of uh, the virus. And then also just because of um, the fact that they essentially have a military coup going on. Um, and then the last two critters to get out of here that are not accurate for the biotope photos uh, for the big world contest is that Siamese algae eaters from the other side of the mountains in uh, Myanmar, th this guy's from uh, Thailand more so, even though they are in Myanmar in some spots, but he's more Thailand. And then there is a Pleco baby that I put in here when it was first born, like pulled from the cave. And uh, it's doing pretty, pretty well. It's gotten really big in this tank, eating all the algae. And uh, I lucked out the thick lip garamis. You know how I had one die with this heater. And you guys, I can't catch a break lately with things breaking on me. This heater, let's go into the other room so I can show you in the light better. But this heater um, just cracked on me. And I showed you guys this last time. But this heater cracked on me. It did me so dirty. Um, it cracked on me right down to the core and there's like a sand in there it's like epoxy and sand like a grit that they use to insulate the core i think this is an aquion pro series so it's the one you pay more for too and it cracked all along the bottom and it's not a straight crack along the seam it just cracked all the way up but that killed two of my garamis a cpd and two of my um uh glow light danios my chopra danios here you can see it kind of bulged right here so i don't know if that's where um it heated and then split it expanded or something but it makes me really really mad uh that that happened uh and it shocked me too when i put my hand in the tank it shocked me so it, it had loose voltage hey is this gonna work now oh it might it, it's working guys i don't know why it, it literally 15 minutes like when we started the stream there were red lines and all sorts of pro oh no here we go and the mouse stopped working immediately and it's back to freezing up again So, man, that is kind of a weird color pattern and stuff. I mean, it's it looks like it's going right along the refresh rate, like in a slow-mo. But if you guys know something about computers and know what that is, also the fact that the mouse will not move when it's doing this until that refresh, until this bar is scrolled by. But, man, this is like what I do so much work on. Um 
Oh, yeah. So I'm going to, again, try not to think about that. Let's continue the stream, guys. Uh, so the pace of videos might be slowing a little bit, my friends. Uh, I, I might have to reorganize how I'm doing things a little bit. Um, just because, you know, that's just some bad luck. Um, but, uh, hey, look, we have a little nearite snail that's trying to escape. Go back in, buddy. Oops, back in the water, though. Um, so, I really like... So, what I've been able to do with this tank is I've been able to uh, take the center island of wood and stone that comes almost up to the surface... And I was able to take the big clump of red root floaters that's all kind of, I mean, it's all kind of one big piece now. All the roots are fused together. And I was able to put it in the center here, trap some water lettuce back in here, which is now looking like it might even bloom. And uh, that's been staying very nicely over there as a raft. It's anchored by all the bulbitis and boos and anubius and and uh all that kind of stuff in there and uh then everything else is uh looking okay but it needs more trimming and forming but yeah we haven't shown a, a lot of this tank in a while so i wanted to kind of show you guys an update on it also um this is one of my favorite plants that never gets enough love um uh James B. The Mac is, uh, it is a 2015, so it's pretty old, I guess, for a computer laptop, but <laughs> it has all my, um, all my software on it for, um, editing, and I just like the format that they had there, and it was, at the time, it, when, when I got it, it was supercharged, so it had, um, four uh, RAM, two processors, the Intel well, 5 at the time they upgraded it. And then um, they had, uh, yeah, so there was 512 RAM times four. I mean, like it was, it was like out, like custom out performance built by someone who then sold it back. And they had it sitting at the Apple store. And didn't even know like what to call it because someone had kind of customized it, but they decided to resell it. And uh, so I bought it and it was all souped up beyond what the 2019 stock model even was, uh, minus the touch bar thing on it. And so I bought it and I really love it. And it still has a, a, um, a micro SD port and a USB ports and HDMI ports. Whereas none of the new ones have any of that stuff. So it's a really frustrating um, thing about the new ones, I think. Some people think it's great that there's one cord um, that only works with Macs, but it works on all their stuff. So in any case, this plant is Potomagetan Gaii, and it is a, uh, a leafy kind of sword grass. And uh, it has really beautiful copper and red and orange tones in it uh when it's in highlight this one wanted to be anchored to something and you can see all those white runner roots because of that um whereas like some of the ones that have been floating um you can tell where the bottom was anchored where all those white runners are but the top's always been a floater and they're a darker green less of red more of a bronze dark green and light green but they all have also um in low light they have gold bands down the center of every single one of these skinny little leaves um let's see if we can find one of the lower light ones over here yeah like right in here see that gold the gold uh band right there they're very subtle but a very nice plant. I really like those. And then this is the Mayaka Red. And Rotala Ini is right behind it, which looks extremely similar. Um, I, I get them confused if I weren't for where I planted them. And then uh, the Super Red Butterfly. 
a mini butterfly. So, yeah, this, I mean, I kind of miss some of the rare plant stuff that I used to do also. Yeah, it's an Intel. If Intel, you can open it and clean it. Uh, yeah, please email me, James. Uh, it is, uh, um, yeah, email me at alexanderjwilliamson at gmail.com. See, it's opening like it did last time, fine, working fine for a second, and let's, yeah, as soon as I click on anything, this shenanigan starts, and the mouse loses its ability. So, that is extremely frustrating. Literally, with the two thousand I spent on that computer when it was new, when it was newly refurbished, and then the thousand at, with tax, it was like eight fifty plus tax. Tax ten or eleven point two percent or something in our state. That has cost me like three grand now. That computer, so I'm going to be really frustrated. But the other thing I was going to show you guys that I've got set up over here. Um, I've got my light set up. I've got a bucket for. Uh, scraps and stragglers I've got my little cradle for the camera or phone and then we've got the microscope and in here more tank water we're going to explore I'm going to try to find a zoo for you guys I'm going to try to find like 50 species of little critters from my aquarium so then this is a new uh, compilation here this is a bucket of the dirtiest mulmy water filter change water that i could uh collect in my fish room um and because of that i'm hoping that we get some really good results um for the microscope also there's a mosquito in here that i want to well not let out but <laughs> Check the link. What was the name of the grass? Oh, it was... Um, yeah, I definitely tried to turn it on and off. It overheated, huh? Interesting. Okay. Um, okay. Um yeah, please email me. Uh, we'll talk more when I'm not juggling several things, but I really do appreciate that. That's awesome because it's just a super big bummer. Um, but you can see there's a bunch of mosquito larvae in here too. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to examine all of that goodness, all the little seed shrimp, all the little copepods. Um so last time in the other video, it was more very microscopic critters. This one will get into some that are not truly microscopic. They're small, like seed shrimp or scuds um, or like snail eggs right after they hatch. You'll get to see the translucent little baby snails, hopefully. So it should be fun. And people ask me a bunch of times where to get a microscope like this. Um, or what microscope to get. And I would recommend not getting the, the, there's some that look like a little pen. And my wife got me one as a present. Um, and I wanted it like I asked for it. And it turned out to be the biggest hunk of junk. It was such a bummer um, that it, it, it literally was just like a camera from a phone, like the little teeny size lens on the end of like a pen that you twisted a knob to focus and then it ran to a computer. Um, I've seen a lot of them, even like national geographic makes one and they're all garbage. All I've, I've owned two and I've played with five total between me and other people in the fish club who have them and all the pen ones your phone can literally do the same thing. Like literally like it would get like that close and then it would let you focus on say um, your field of view would be about the size of a box around this little crumb right here on, on the, the base of the microscope. Um, but I, this one, a guy named um, 
a guy named John who was very kind. His mother was a teacher, a middle school teacher, and she had this as uh, extra, you know, stuff hardware. And at the bottom, it says a 1978 made by the Microscope Company, and it's called The Scope uh, uh, by Science Kit. <laughs> Um, and then I just bought, uh, I got a new eyepiece. The eyepiece happened to be cracked. So I bought a new eyepiece and then, um, I bought this, which was another 20 bucks or so. And this cradle will hold a camera depending on what hardware you, uh, tighten it up with. You can use any of the basic quick release clips on there. Uh, and then, uh, you can also, I mean, you can also use this same, little holster thing here or the base plates like those um there's attachments for all of that and i think it was only 20 bucks so yeah that that's a handy little kit that has given a lot of use the highest magnification doesn't work on it the lens is cracked in there and that's a bummer but um the nice thing about those is you can buy all new parts so i would highly recommend buying old uh, surplus stuff from from schools or or other places like that um if you're gonna do something like get a scope or go all out and buy five hundred dollar plus one for you know the new kind with maybe two or all digital display that with the binocular vision uh for me the monocular vision of a scope tends to strain my eyes after a little while so also, this is what I use as water fertilizers um, if I have my drithers, which is, this is Bridie K, or rather ADA's potassium, essentially. And it's there, um, it's basically just potash dissolved in, in, in solution of water and something else. But it's very high concentrate for potassium whereas potassium is generally really hard to it's not water soluble um or doesn't store very well you can't get a lot of it in the water before it falls out no matter how you process it um and so uh i really like that brand the amount you get out of it um and then also this has this is the other part of the formula and it's pretty small amounts. Look, it's like 0 0.01, 0 0.00. I mean, so we're talking very diluted amounts of magnesium, sulfur, uh, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, um, uh, zinc. And this one is called Brighty Green, and it's your trace minerals. And then all my major minerals, like iron, uh, well, things, just all my the other things that you'd worry about, phosphates, iron, uh, nickel, have you just have heavier stuff too. Um, I don't worry about that. It's it seems to be in the volcanic and active substrates by fluval str um, stratum or ADA or whatever I'm using. It seems to do the trick. Um, so I don't stress on it. It's, it's just whatever. Um, and then I do a squirt of that every day or every other day, or sometimes I'll do like I just did only treat it once a week or twice a week and do two or three squirts, but it's so diluted that you could get an algae bloom or something, but for the most part, you're never going to have to worry about that if you're just doing a squirt a day per 20 gallons. Uh, but the stuff is pricey, but I love that it doesn't have uh, any major iron and it doesn't have any nitrites or nitrates because my tanks are always so full of fish that I don't need nitrites or nitrates added. My fish already are doing that. We're trying to get rid of the nitrates and nitrites and a lot of flowering uh, or not flowering, but a lot of the colorful vegetation that you have in an aquascape it's not red because of iron like a lot of people think uh it's actually red because of no nitrites no nitrates no ammonia uh and it's starved of that and and it feels like it's at the end of its cycle as the same as when it's starved of sunlight because it's limited plants are always limited by whichever resources in in least supply so 
if zinc is in low supply, that's going to limit all the other, uh, you know, iron, uh, magnesium or whatever. They can't be utilized to their full potential if one is missing. So you got to kind of figure out with plants when they're unhealthy, what the one that's missing is, whether that's nitrates, phosphates, um, trace minerals, macros. Uh, well, those are some of the macros phosphates. And then also there's carbon. Um, so, and potassium, but it's usually going to be potassium, uh, nitrogen, carbon, uh, or, um, magnesium. Those are kind of the, the main ones or phosphates. Also, I figured I'd show you this. I know it's not strictly aquarium stuff, but um, Fluval Stratum, I like. Uh, I like ADA uh, uh, Amazonas or Amazonia, I guess. Amazonia? Amazonas? Uh, I can't remember. Amazonia. Um, I like it the most because it is active. It has nitrites and nitrates. I know that makes cycling rough and it usually causes an algae spike. Um, uh, but I like it because long-term it's a really good soil. It lasts three years usually, if not like five. So I like that if you're going to keep it set up for a long time. Uh, fluval stratum doesn't have the active substrate of the organic compounds, uh, that are so you don't have as much uh, carbon compound, uh, which is just basically code word for detritus and debris that's broken down into its smaller constituents. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah, so these plants, my the salvia plant got low on water and it collapsed on itself. And then I watered it again and now it's trying to grow up again, but now it's all crooked. My prayer plant is just going nuts trying to hide under the couch. I think it just doesn't like light. But we moved it out of the windowsill and over here, and it's just doing phenomenal. So that's kind of cool, too. Um, did Where did I get my Jamaican fish? I got my Jamaican fish, um, the Lamias. I got them uh, and the other ones, the metallic live bears. I got them from a... A uh, store in Seattle called uh, Aquarium Zen, but they were actually from other folks in Seattle. One person who'd gone collecting in the Caribbean. Hold on one sec. I'm just trying to play with the setting on the camera. Um. All right, guys. So we're going to wrap this up soon, any minute here. Um, but, uh, oh, hey, Ryan. What's up, man? Huang Nguyen, uh, shrimp tank in the soil. Do you have to clean all the thing in the soil? Uh, no, the shrimp clean pretty well. If you don't feed the shrimp anything and you just allow algae and food that gets left over, from when you feed them every so often and don't feed them like daily, they do a really good job of cleaning up uh, themselves. And if you don't have plant debris falling constantly and just piling up and creating uh, a possible ammonia or nitrite nitrate uh, block, then uh, they do pretty well. Shrimp really don't need much food. Now, if you want to color them up, if you want to grow them super fast, that's where the foods do come in more handy. But I tend to feed those guys just bee pollen, whatever they're eating. And then once in a while, like once a week, I'll give them a shake of some flake food or um, some uh, fluval bug bites granules or <laughs> rapashi dust or um, Bacter AE, which just causes um, surface bacteria and um, proteins and also protozoa colonies to form and so they can eat those little teeny things chance what's up if he uses that to render videos he could definitely wear it out unfortunately laptops aren't great for that yeah i do use it to render videos so 
it could be that it's met its match and I need to get a desktop for editing YouTube type stuff, especially for any after effects or anything like that. I know that I've been pushing my luck for quite some time, but you know, you can only spend so many thousands of dollars on, on uh, tech equipment. You know, I got the mic, I got the lights and then we got a camera um, and the DSLR, but, now uh i mean obviously you want solid state now or mirrorless all that stuff but um yeah it's just kind of prioritizing what's what but uh yeah are you leaving honey okay hold on guys my wife is headed out i love you honey. Um, all right, guys. So, uh, sorry, my wife's headed over to her friend's house for a board game uh, and wine night. Uh, this weekend, though, I do not have. Uh, my wife is leaving for San Diego. She wasn't going to, and then she was, and then she wasn't, and then she was. Will she? Won't she? Who knows? Um, but it's basically her. It was a conference for work, and then a bunch of companies canceled even coming. Um, and then they were like, are we going to have the conference? And she decided that even if the conference is like only five or six companies, she's still going to go because her company is the parent company of another four companies that are also going to be there. And she's the head of marketing. So, um, that's a new title for her. Um, I, and I help them also, but they work for Charlie's produce and I work for them freelance lately. Um, I've been doing, uh, a lot of side projects. And so I'm just kind of getting a little bit, uh, drained, but I gotta, I gotta pay off the hospital bill. And then I, now it looks like maybe we'll have to get that a new laptop. Cause that's just not looking good. You guys can tell what I dream about all, all day, every day is, uh, these plants I've got the like aluminum nerve plant on here. Um, but we'll see if I can do anything to fix this. Also, it's flickering and then it gets stable and then the mouse stops working completely and then it'll work again. And then when I try to click on anything or move the mouse more than like two inches, it freezes up again. And, uh, I noticed that with the keyboard, so any of you tech gurus, see now I can't even do anything. There we go. Any of you tech gurus, none of the buttons are working when the screen is coming down like that. Um, it's like the Matrix screen or something with the green numbers coming down. I mean, I can try to un uninstall. I mean, I don't know. Actually, does Mac even let you uninstall drivers? I don't think they do. Um but I'll, I, I'll try to Google it on my phone and figure it out. Because honestly, it's just stressing me out right now. So I'll have to go figure that out and, uh, and figure out what to do. Luckily, yeah, everything's backed up. After <laughs> the phone got stolen from me in the uh, smash, I, I, I call it a smash and grab because they just smashed into me and grabbed my phone. Um, um, does this happen when you have the camera off or something cause interference? Um, yeah, it, it was happening no matter what. That's why I was about seven minutes later than normal <laughs> on the stream tonight was I was trying to get even, even to set up this stream through StreamYard, which I'd done it just fine this morning on that computer. And now, um, yeah. Um, uh, Carolyn, if I get to device manager, what am I looking to do in device manager? Are there drivers that I can do anything for or do anything with? Like usually Mac is notoriously useless uh, for being able to DIY fix. Um, I've learned that over the years. Uh, but I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's dead. Um, 
Uh, I mean, I there's I don't even think I could get it to back up files right now. But luckily, I have backed up all my YouTube related files, all my graphic design files. But um, yeah, it's not like a PC where I can just like restore it to an earlier date without some special gear. Unfortunately, freaking Max. Um, I mean, you could wipe it and reload the OS X if you get the right stuff on like a flash drive or something, or I guess, what is a Thunderbolt drive? I don't even know anymore, honestly, um, with the newer stuff, but I've, I haven't done any of that for probably 10 years. I haven't had to do any of that. I used to be really good with it, and I used to be really good with PCs, but that was over 15 years ago, so now I'm... I'm definitely out of the loop. And whenever I try to go in and change stuff, I'm like, oh, they don't let us play with that anymore. They don't let us change this anymore. Great. Just says, see like your Mac retailer or whatever. Um, so, but guys, it's been real. I'm sorry. I'm a little cranky because of the computer situation, but um, I think we'll probably do another, um, live stream since my wife's going to be gone over the weekend and i'll be bored it'll be nighttime i want to do a stream where the europeans can see it too so i'd really like to do a stream closer to say 2 a.m uh pacific time too yeah yeah the nano aquarium guy mac have the time machine um backup that only works if you've done the backup before yeah i mean but it's not the it's not the computer uh it's the hardware that something's going wrong with i think i don't think it's the software um i think it's like the connection to the cables or the processor or the graphics card you know something like that um and and maybe contacts because i spilled water on it three years ago spent the 850 or whatever it came 950 dollars to fix it all refurbish it put a new retina uh, display on it um from an actual mac certified store that came with a two-year warranty that ran out a month ago wouldn't you know it so that makes me just so freaking happy um <laughs> but yeah um <laughs> thank you rusty braids i hope what uh you need finds you uh good fortune to you well thank you yeah no max definitely are uh a pain when it comes to when things go wrong uh you, there's not a lot you could do especially hardware wise they i mean they don't even want you to be able to take the battery out anymore or to even use a you know a uh usb stick or anything you know they want they want one hole one and androgynous amorphous hole that all uh information and changes will be uh completed through uh san diego go with her and have you drop off have her drop you off at george's you know she did ask if i wanted to go but she's going sunday morning Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then coming home Wednesday morning. And she's got to be at the conference from 7 a.m. till 5 every day, like, because she's one of the host people. And then they go out to dinner and drink. So I was like, oh, screw that noise. I'm like, they can go have their fun, but I'm going to be excluded every day except Sunday. Uh, I wouldn't be able to have any fun. And then I was like, well, I'd be in like downtown San Diego. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I could visit a couple people. But at the same time, I, I just figured I'm going to save my money. I'm going to save my air miles. I really want to go to the Triple Crown. But I mean, honestly, I can't freaking. Yeah, <laughs> Chance Larson. Matt, Cloaca Port coming soon. Isn't that the truth? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm trying to save my money and I'm trying to save, save my air miles and stuff so I can do the triple crown or one of the aqua shells, something this year that's out east. Um, every year I try to go out east and every year there's uh, a surgery or a medical problem or a bill or I mean, it's just. Yeah. So in any case. Um, 
I'm going to get out of here before I start being a bummer uh, or saying any unchoice words about that laptop. But uh, I really do appreciate all of you hanging out tonight. I'm a little out of my normal sorts because of all the stuff on my mind. And I apologize for that if the stream was a bit disjointed. But I will um, talk to all of you later and uh, probably we'll do that pop-up stream on Sunday afternoon and maybe another one in the middle of the night, honestly. Um, uh, Carolyn said, in device manager, see if there are any items which are corrupted. A yield sign with an exclamation mark, right? What the heck? Oh, right. Uh, click, then uninstall, then restart your computer. They will restart once yours. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give that a try again. I know a few other little tricks, but I think it's a hardware issue. I mean, because I can only move the mouse this far and then I have to wait. And then sometimes when I try to move the mouse, it, it just goes off to the side along like a lateral, like an X axis or whatever. Wait, Y axis. Um Oh, is she talking about a PC? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I will, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm, I do have a friend who repairs Macs and iPhones um, on the side. Um, so hopefully he can help me too. But I no, I really want to come to uh, Aquashella in Orlando because, um, yeah, I just... I'd love to go collecting down there. We have a ton of friends in Tampa, which isn't that far of a drive. I want to go and spend like a week and a half there. Um, and I also want to go to the Triple Crown because so many people are going, so many good talks and speakers and stuff. Um, those are the two I really want to go to. But all that being said, you know, it just depends on how many side gigs I can pick up right now and like um, how much they pay. Um, because I also still have that several like seven and a half grand of hospital bills um, from the spine surgery that they told me I wouldn't have that I'm still appealing and fighting, but it's, it's not looking that great. It, like the whole, just be aware when you call your insurance and, and you check for a procedure and they say they're pre-screening it, they say they're running it, they give you the totals. You've done it twice. You called the doctors and asked them the same it does not guarantee benefits. This is not a guarantee of benefits. Remember those words. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, you know, hopefully my health is getting better. Life's going okay. Um, and uh, the fish are doing good. So that's what, those are the important things at the end of the day. All right, guys. Well, uh, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I can tell I'm bringing people down as people leave the sinking ship of the show. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, take it easy. Have a good one. Oh, and I wanted to, before I forget, too, I wanted to, again, thank uh, Kelly Joe Huff. I want to really thank you for um, the uh, Venmo uh, support. That was very kind. And also, um, uh, Joel, I want to thank you for the PayPal support. Uh, it was like five five dollars i think um and i really appreciate that um because it's like almost i mean that's almost the same as like nine dollars as a super chat when you figure in the youtube cut and the tax stuff so uh but in any case at the end of the day i'm grateful for all you guys i'm grateful for um everything that's uh gone on here on the channel and on YouTube and in the community. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.